control in standard. You got Ross Merriam, a mono red aggro in Pioneer against Peter Ingram playing that Demir Inverter deck that Patrick and I are not all that impressed with. And then Chris Marshall against Eli Cassis. That's Heli Company against Demir Wurza. And away we go with an Inquisition of Kozilek. So, let's get a good look at this hand. We've got a forest and a horizon canopy as lands. Birds of Paradise, Kitchen Finks, Giver of Runes, Heliod, Sun Crown, and a Ranger Captain. I want to make sure I get that right. It's tricky sometimes. Where is that deck list? Chris Marshall. Ranger, Ca okay, yeah, Ranger Captain of Eos. I had it right. You had it. I had it. I remember the Night Captain of Eos. That's the five mana version. Mm -hmm. Birds of Paradise head to the graveyard. Well, easy does it. Yeah. Take my mana accelerant. Yeah. I'll just draw one. <laughs> Big draw stuff. Duh. <laughs> Not bad. Marshall with a little rolling of the sleeves it's there. It's time to get the hands dirty. Arkham's Astrolabe. Draw a card. There's a Thought Seize. See what else Cassis wants to take out of this hand. Inquisition took that Birds of Paradise earlier. Horizon Canopy, Kitchen Finks. Heliod, Sun Crown from Theros Beyond Death. Ranger Captain of Eos and Giver of Runes. So a couple of Modern Masters All Stars, too. All right. See you later, Ranger Captain. All right. Back over to Marshall, who will play that Horizon Canopy that we all knew about. He'll take one to deploy the Heliod. And there is Heliod Sun Crowned. Three mana, five, five, indestructible, like all the gods are. As long as your devotion to white is less than five, Heliod is not a creature. Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature and enchantment you control, and you can grant another target creature lifelink for the small cost of a colorless and a white mana, as Eli Cassis is going to sacrifice a polluted delta. So the combo is mm -hmm. that you give a walking ballista lifelink, mm -hmm. and then you sacrifice a to you know sacrifice a counter to deal damage that causes the plus one plus one counter to trigger, and you can do that infinite times. May I borrow this noble hierarch? Thank you very much, Archmage Charm. Going to take that. So now we're heading back over to Marshall. He's going to need to draw a land here to be able to play another three-mana spell. He wanted to take a moment and get Healy out onto the battlefield. Now, another thing you can do here is this combination with Spike Feeder is infinite life. Yes. So that's, that's fun. He can gain infinite life right now. If he's got the feeder. If he's got the feeder. Bang, 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 bang. However, either Cassis is playing a deck that can generate infinite 1-1 one, one Thopter token, so infinite life is no not going to get the job done. No good here. There you go. There's Kitchen Finks. Thinking beatdowns, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Your good buddy, Kay Finks. Yeah. Increasing that devotion count, too. So you get it. Yeah. I knew you'd figure it out. A lot of synergies That's here. That's right. Archmage's Charm is going to go back on top of the deck. Marshall wants to take a look at that, and we can, too. Archmage's Charm, a lot going on with that particular card. Counter spell, draw a couple of cards. And sometimes take Noble Hierarch if you feel like it. Might be time for an Urza, perhaps. It is. So Cassis's position gets extremely strong if he makes it out of this turn. From that point, he has a hard counter spell and just a major presence on the battlefield. Cassis um, is going to draw a card. He's going to pick up that copy of Archmage's Charm. He's actually already rolled up here <laughs> because now the Urza turns everything into Mock Sapphires, and so he has his three blue mana. He does. The Construct is one, the Astrolabe is two, and the Nile Spellbomb is three to be able to cast an Archmage's Charm. Shout out to Mystic Sanctuary for helping along with that. This is a noble hierarch. 
That is a giver of runes. And we'll pass the turn back. Gonna tap some mana here. And I think he's going to use Archmage's Charm just to draw two cards, which is why that card's so powerful. It's that flexibility. It was able to freeze Marshall from playing anything good that turn, mm -hmm. and you can just cash it in for two cards and move on. Well, there's another Mystic Sanctuary off of Fetchland. That one's... Uh Pretty, uh, it's, uh, the the combination of the opportunity cost yeah. and its flexibility and power makes it quite strong. Hey, play design guy. Thank you. You better fix that. Well, what I you guess you can't. What you want me? What you want me? I guess you can't fix it. What you want me? What are you suggesting I do? I don't here? want any more Mystic Sanctuaries coming out of the pipeline here. You got to narrow down what you mean by a Mystic Sanctuary. That type of card. Type is still vague. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but I feel like I'm trying to say something. No, I mean, you are trying. I'm gonna <laughs> I get to start blaming you for things. Oh, War of Invention. Not the best reveal. Let's see. All right. Richard's bottle. Yeah, it's sick. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen worse. Every Urza activation, you just get a 20% off coupon yeah. on your next Urza I've activation. I've seen worse. <laughs> just like. No, it's a cycling artifact. Yes, that is that every single time. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Kevin Jones doesn't play this deck so much. You're just moving. Oh yeah, the so parts. So much are material around. Parts are moving. Yeah, I'm worried it's too much. Kevin probably, it's probably too much to keep track of. Oh sure, a little brain so, overload. Yeah, just okay. too many, too many triggers. I mean, heaven knows I ain't doing it. You kidding me? You got to keep them in discreet. You know, a ponder, a preordain. Yeah. Not there's these it's contained ambiguous. To, it's contained to itself. Right. Yeah. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I don't know about kitchen things, yo. It does a little bit of everything, <laughs> man. We already went over it. <laughs> Double it's white. This guy. Double white. Now, hey, we're one piece away from going absolutely nuts so here with Infinite Life again. There's Anna Fenza, Kin Tree Spirit. We're thinking, we're thinking maybe a little Viscera Seer action as Ross Merriam wins game number one over Peter Ingram in Pioneer. Corey Baumeister won game number one over Jake Mondello in Standard. And we're bringing you Modern. I think you don't like Kitchen Finks for a lot of reasons. It's got nothing to do with this deck. I just don't know. You I know. think it may have given you more L's than any other card in your career. Uh... I'd be surprised if that was true. I mean, it's it, it'll it'd be in the top ten. Oops, there yeah. it is. There's the oof. We're and we're just one piece away to assemble a combo, which is not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see about so, that. So we'll see. Hang tight. <laughs> Let's spin the Urza wheel. In the Casillas, we can't forget a former invitation. Coupon coming. A former yep, yep, another coupon. Yep. <laughs> a former invitational champion here on the SCG Tour. Top aided. Mythic Championship that was here last year. He's a player. Formerly, you know, originally we found out about him through his legacy play. Yes. Turns out he can play all the formats very well. Yeah, I don't know about that whole notion of, you know, format specialist. Yeah, not, uh, not for him. I think magic's just magic. I think, I think magic specialist yeah. is what he may be. Generalist. Yeah. That is a field of ruin. And Cassis will pass the turn back over to Marshall. And he'll draw a card. Did Cassis remember his bobble trigger? That's a great question. I see the die there. Yeah, but I think he may have forgotten. You think it would happen more often? I think it happens in the tables we're not watching a lot. <laughs> that, that may be true. 
You know who's not a surgeon with their bobble triggers? Who's that? A dear friend, Chad Castell. Wow, boy. Way to bring him back onto the booth. Not low Cassis. Believe it. Ah, it's here we go. Here we go. Now, here's the conversation I've been waiting for. Can't wait. He didn't announce his draw step. Uh -huh. We're allowed to back up here. Marshall, Marshall, drew his car, Marshall drew his card and waited a long time, is what I would say. So now we sit here and wait. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I'm surprised this doesn't happen more. Because I would forget all the time. I, I would have what, what um, Ben Friedman made. Ben Friedman made a big, big sheet of paper that he used to put on top of his deck <laughs> to remember he was playing Death Shadow. I would do something like that in order for me to remember. Back in my Spryer days, I wouldn't forget. But no. nowadays, I'm, I'm old. I turn 34 next month. I'm a steel trap with my triggers. I was. Because, you you know, now at this point I have the space in my brain to either keep track of my triggers or play a sharp game. Not both. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> You'd be asking too much Is it, for you, you to do Pick both. one or the yeah. other. <laughs> I understand. I and understand. Uh, the failing with the triggers is actually more embarrassing. <laughs> well, you know what we're going to do? What's up? I think we might. We well. You know what? Let's sell some people some stuff. Talk you to me. You ready? Yeah. How's, how's SCG Premium sound, bud? Yeah, let's talk about it. We want to get out the satchel? We'll start here. We'll start with Sheldon, Jerry, Emma, and PVDDR, who top aided um, PT Brussels because, of course, he did. Yeah. He's like 18th or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Get all that content and much more by becoming a member oh! of SCG Games Premium. Oh! Yeah. Hello! Yeah. Get a good look at him. They also did this. Sure. May, yeah. I, may I ask? Yeah. Who was responsible for the background art? Why am I at the bottom of an aquarium? You're not at the bottom. That's a that's a satchel card. There's a satchel in Magic. I can't think of the name of the card right now, but that's that's a literal satchel back it, there. Where, where? There's a bag behind the graphic. Oh, it's just obstructed by the by your right. gigantic head. By my just by my just enormous dome. Yeah. <laughs> it's a literal. If you got any, if you got any questions for me, and I know that all of you do because you send them to me unsolicited all the time, you can now direct those questions to mailbag at starcygames dot com, and perhaps I will answer your question in this column that's been going on for a little over a month now. That's been a great column. Great column. Been a great column. There you go. Uh, other stuff. Yeah. This is, this is your highlight right here. Hey bums, <laughs> listen up. Seven ninety nine per month and receive instant access to all the articles by all those columnists we just mentioned and many more. And on top of that, exclusive benefits and discounts on the website, including 5% off sealed products, 10% off singles, and 15% off supplies. That's over at starcitygames.com slash join dash premium. There it is. There it is. Now that is how you get people to sign up for premium. Yeah. Proud of you. <laughs> Proud of you. Hey, bums. There you go. Listen up. That's us, too. Yep. I think uh, I think intern Rob said we're going to standard right now. We got our hedge edge involved with that bobble trigger. So you know what? We're gonna watch Mondello and Baumeister do their thing. Baumeister won game one pretty easy. Now Rimrock Knight gonna join the fray after helping bolster a fervent champion with the boulder rush. My kind of card. I know it is. You, you kidding, if they had two good deals. They had that card. You, uh, yeah, you, you, you would have never. Lost. Are you kidding me? You could never give yeah. me a card like that. <laughs> you could have never given me a card like would've that. Would have never lost. There's an island. Those creatures dead. Yeah, sweep. Shadow the sky. Goodbye. All right, back to Mondello. It's got a mobilized district out there with Castle Enbreath and two beautiful mountains. Mm -hmm. For Baumeister, he's played a devout decree and a shadow of the sky, hollowed fountain, two islands, and a plains. One mobilized district in the sideboard. Oh, firing in. Give more, him a little taste. More expensive spells and the beatdowns. That's right. Not a great spot here for Jake Mondello if that's his play on turn five. I'll tell you that much. Baumeister falling down to a clean 16. Oh, see, Embercleave in hand. None look great here. Card that everyone thinks is busted because they were already losing every time it gets played against them. <laughs> sure, sure. 
You don't see this. You don't see these games. We refer to this as the overrun fallacy. Mm -hmm. You overrate cards that only get cast when they're killing you. Yes. Life correction here. Corey actually down to 13 mm -hmm. after that mobilized district attack. Omen of the Sky. Going to come in. Scry 2. Corey gets to draw. Now Temple of Light. Mint Scry to the bottom. Pass the turn back. I'll tell you what. These blue white decks, they do not have any difficulty finding what they're looking for with all the scrying that they get to do. Oh, yeah. Yep. Three more thanks. And a little scorch spitter. Yep. Pass the turn back to Corey. That's game. That's it. Well, you get to Embercleave the <laughs> <laughs> big spits. <Yeah. laughs> Dream Trawler <laughs> is absurd. 3-5 Flying Lifelink. Whenever you draw a card, plus one, plus one, until end of turn. Whenever Dream Trawler attacks, draw a card. Discard a card. Can't kill it. Thanks. Phoenix of Ash. Okay. going to take a lot more than that. It's in his hand. See one ever cleave. Is there another one? Probably some stinky, other stinky red card. Some card that's not better than Dream Trawler. Phoenix of Ash, though? That's yeah. my language. That I, I feel you. I'm going to be buying four of those. I feel you. Ah, the Birth of Miletus. Great. Search for a Plains. That card's busted, by the way. Oh, it's busted. Yeah, completely oh, yeah. Completely absurd. Oh, yeah. Search for a Plains. Make, way ahead, yeah. make an 0-4 gain two life. Busted. Busted. Next up. Oh, well, Speth. Elspeth Conquers Death. Also busted. That's gone. Thanks. Dream Trawler. Hounf. Draw a card. Yo, show them the Ember Cleave. Bane <laughs> Bain Slayer Angel in the house. Come on. T tune up the band. It's time to go. It just did. Well, you got to start somewhere. Fervent Champions will plus each other. Scorch spitting. Yeah, there's big spits. And now, bang! Wow. Where's it going to go? Okay. Hey, Embercliff's out here. Gonna count up all the damage is what we're going to do. Corey will still not be dead. Yeah, that amount of damage is closer to zero than to a number that matters. Sure. But we'll get, it, we'll get a price check here in a moment. Let's take a look at Elspeth Conquer's death. Let's see chapter two on that. That's about to happen. Non-creature spells your opponents cast. Not a chapter. Two more. Not a chapter. Sometimes a chapter, I guess, but not not in this game. Yeah. All right. Let's draw a card. In just a moment. We got no four wall now. Corey's at five. A little low. Looks like Peter Ingram tie things up against Ross Merriam. Demir Inverter, Mono Red Agra are going to go to game three. We're going to be jumping that way in just a moment. We're going to watch this one unfold, in which Corey Baumeister feels as though he's at an advantageous position. But it's not a runaway. No. No, I mean, you could still slip up from here. Mm -hmm. But his position is very strong. You got to like attacking with Dream Trawler, though. Get to draw a card. Looks like he gets to gain five life. The follow-up, he's tapping a bunch of mana already. He's going to slow himself down just a little bit. Is number two on our SCG Tour Player of the Year leaderboard. It's early in the year, but for this member of Team BCW... He's off to a great start because there's another copy of Elspeth Conquers Death taking care of the Ember Cleave. Don't forget that Corey does have an 04 wall back there as well due to the birth of Miletus. That card is so good against so good against aggressive decks. It's a lot. It's a lot. Assuming you get to play four turns, it's a lot. We got Ely Cassis up a game here against Chris Marshall. Demir Wars up a game over Heliot Company. And now we're going to see exactly how Mondello wants to move forward here. 
Didn't get a great look at what Jake drew. But it looks like he feels like he might be able to get back into this one. All right, that's not a bad start. Annex. Or Knox, perhaps. Either way. Tomato, tomato. It's a good draw step. Not sure if it's going to be good enough, though. I had a funny conversation. Someone being like, I think the Annex is really good. And I'm like, you mean the control magic of land? <laughs> and they're like, no, this is a Zach Allen. Ether Gust is going to target Fervent Champion. Beatdowns. O4 is going to do some blocking, of course. Scorch Pitcher is going to get a little ting ting in. And Corey is going to quickly untap. He'll draw. That'll trigger Dream Trawler. Elspeth will conquer death. So we're going to see Corey return target creature or planeswalker card from his own graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on a loyal or a loyalty counter on it if he has something to return. Looks like he does not. So he'll just attack and do his thing with Dream Troll. He also got to gain two life from the birth of Miletus as well. Boy. What is this about to be? Oh, another one. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Me, oh my. Mm -hmm. Glass Casket. I'll target that. Well, Dream Trawler is a crackerjack of a <laughs> Oh, no! <laughs> no! <laughs> Corey, ever, ever the sportsman, Jake, Jake, not interested in a handshake. We've had a lot of really funny handshakes today. We have. A lot of, lot of pump fakes, a little, uh, little inside-out dribble, a little top yeah. and bottom. You know the sports that are not top ten? we got to start doing that for this. Corey extends. Ah, no, sir. <laughs> I think it might be because Jake is sick. He's cleaning his hands. He just sanitized his hands. I think that's actually totally fine then. It looked bad. It's just funny. It was a tough look in the moment. My, my, if I, if I may, I would like to request us coming up with a best of SCG Live, just bad handshakes. Bad handshakes and bad handshake happy, etiquette. Happy to do it. Let's go back to the archives. I can eat. Oh, you're talking about it. There we go. Yeah. The game, who really cares? The yeah. handshake, though? They're going to be thinking about that one for a while. Mm -hmm. Baumeister's team looking to move up to 8-1. and one. He's on the board for his squad. Ely can see up a game right now over Chris Marshall. Don't forget, too, this team here, this uh, this Baumeister fellow, mm -hmm. he top eight at, uh, excuse me, he top four at SCG Columbus, too. So, no stranger. You see Ingram and Miriam are just finishing up their mulligans, and they'll be underway here in just a moment. So if Ingram wins this one, he wins it for the team and the match. Mm -hmm. Miriam keeps the team alive here with a win. Mm-hmm. We'll see if he's able to do so. Ross giving it a long look over. Ah, he's going to ask Jake. What do you think, bud? Hand appears to be good enough to keep. Just not sure what card to put to the bottom. All right, Jake's going to help out there. It looks like two cards might be going to the bottom here for Ross. All right, it's a mute vault. Pass it. Over to Ingram, who's just got a fitted pools. We go over to Ross. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> it. Oh, wings. You guys, have, you guys just want to go to dinner now? Give, him a, give him a touch. Oh, the Cho Estuary. Yeah. You really got a problem with that card. Do you like that one, uh, Rabble Master, huh? I don't have a problem with it. It's just I didn't know times were so tough out there. They are tough. People are really struggling. Oh, almost. Cast Down's going to take care of the Rabble Master before it makes a goblin. That's a swamp. Ingram will pass the turn back. I like firing up Mutavolt on two. Your draw is what it is. That's right. It's better than doing nothing on two. Give him a little tasty poo. You dialed up both Mutavolts here? I don't hate it. Rabble Master. Let's try again.
Ingram has a response. It's going to be an omen of the sea. Scry 2. Thassa's Oracle among those cards. Ross might be reaching for the goblin token. He's begging to make a goblin token. It's looking promising. Rabble Master got killed by Cry of the Carnarium, along with the Goblin. Poor fella. Is it time for an Eidolon? Yes. We gonna mute a Vault on in? Time to tune up the band. Mute Vault's an all-time banger. I'm a big fan of that. Card. Yes, it's really good. Mary, I'm waiting for Ingram to respond in kind. Yeah, let's let's get a little chit chat going with Corey B. Opt in response. All right. Interesting that Ingram's going to do that when he has a fatal push in hand. Going to take two right now from the mutable, but a conscious decision as we head back over to Peter. That's a swamp. This. Is a Legion's End. The hand yeah. left over is Goblin Heel Cutter and Bomat Courier. So if you want to uh, fatal push the Mutavault because Legion's End can't touch Mutavault, yep. that would be the reason to sequence it the way that Ingram did. Okay. Goblin Heel Cutter, the old Goblin Berserker that we don't see much of. But it's got Dash, and Dash is pretty important. Two and a red. You can play it for its Dash cost. If you do it gains haste, and it comes back into your hand at the end of the turn. A really fun Dash design. I like that card a lot. Yep. Guess what? It's time to go. It's <laughs> time to Dash. There's Bobo. There's Heel Cutter. Right, Going to target Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> Bomat Courier. Would like to put a card underneath it. And now Ingram is going to consult the squad once again. So Miriam now basically on empty. Just waiting to be put out. Just going to get... I suspect that Miriam's just going to get beaten to death by this thing, even if the combo doesn't well, take he's off. Get, he's getting inverted right now, that's yeah. for sure. Not much deck left there for Peter Ingram. And I suppose this is the upside of the deck, which is that 6-6. Six, six, well, that's a lot of damage. Yeah, it's not the, the, It's not bad all the time. Mm -hmm. you, you can win plenty of games just by having five or six cards left and a 6-6 six, six being good enough. Probably comes up mostly against red. Decks that can't kill a 6-6, six, six, but yeah. it happens. It's true. It's part of it. We're going back over to Cassis. Excuse me, to Ingram. Pardon me. How's six sound? Hmm. Peter says no. Hmm. <laughs> Ruined. Ingram falls down to eights. Miriam will draw. Now Miriam does, it appear, have a copy of Stoke the Flames in hand. Might be on the burnout strategy now, as opposed to doing any attacking whatsoever. I mean, the, the waiting game here is fairly good for Ingram. You think so? 
the, I mean, the pressure's on Ross to do something. Ingram doesn't have many cards left. This is going to be activating the Omen of the Sea to scry two. He'll keep one on top, one on bottom, and now he gets to draw a card. Three cards left. Gave up an attack last turn. I suspect that his plan here is to try to just set up a combo. He's not really aspiring to beat down. I think Casting I an op now takes it off the table, too. He just doesn't have enough cards left in his library. Mm -hmm. Well, he does have Jason Hand, the wielder of mysteries. So mm -hmm. he's, setting up the, he's setting up the one with that card. And making sure he doesn't get himself killed. He'll just yeah. pass the turn back. So yep. no reason to do anything risky with attacking. And maybe... Uh, Miriam Hill will overvalue the enabler for the combo kill here. And use a removal spell on that rather than trying to burn out Ingram, which is good for him because he has a backup piece in that Jace to be able to combo out. And you see Mondello tagging in. Give Ross a little bit of help here. Are there flames to be stoked? And there you do see Thassa's Oracle. Enters the battlefield. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is your devotion of Vu. Put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. So just a good blocker for now. Plus some other positive things. But it's on Jace to get the job done in this game. All right, there's Stoke the Flames. And it's going to go down to four. All right. Mary will untap after a lot of conversation with Jake about what to do that turn. There's Hazaret. Pass a turn back, and I think Peter wins with Jace right now. Yes, he does. Mills himself draws a card, and that's going to do it. The team of Eli Cassis, Peter Ingram, and Corey Baumeister win this match over Christmas.